It's among the 360 in motion presence choice cuts. We are sharing choice cut excerpt from the full stream of the joint and collaborative project by the Red Monkey Talks and the Zabunga 360 in motion channels. The full video is the first in focus main feature of the Red Monkey Talks show dealing with the Penafrancia Fluvial Colgante Bridge disaster of September 16, 1972 and related trivia. It is our objective to expand the narrative, finally fill missing details, and shed the light and information for many who were not around yet when the unfortunate event occurred. Based from the original text published online in Zabunga360.net, this edition contained a revised long-form narrative with additional, comprehensive and updated information. From the script by Japadupi under the direction and technical supervision of Danton Pascual. Subscribe to our channels, like our content, leave a comment, and ring the notification bell, to get timely updates. When you like and share our content, you help increase the visibility and distribution of our posts. Your support will also contribute in a huge way, to the awareness for others who could learn a thing or two from our content. Now, for our Choice Cut presentation here. Are in focus for this first edition, we recall and discuss the tragedy that happened five decades ago, during a religious celebration of the transfer of the venerated images of the Virgin of Penafrancia and the El Divino Rostro, via a fluvial procession on the Naga River in the city of Naga, Bicol region, the Philippines. Our program's pre-content features the quick rerun of Traslacine procession and celebration, which involved the transfer of the images from the Penafrancia Shrine to the Naga Metropolitan Cathedral. Then, followed by a quick pre-fluvial celebration and departure from the cathedral towards the Naga River embarkation landing. We also included during our main discussion and recollection, more snippets of the fluvial coverage, the modern and safe version in the current format of observing the religious celebration. Welcome to our first official long form outing of Red Monkey Talks show. We are glad and thank you for joining us. In this extended full narrative, we present all the salient details, which include drama and sorrow, personalities and people involved, surrounding the Naga City Colgante Bridge disaster. This whole show shares much of remembrance and recall of the tragedy, and then some. Remembering the sorrows and pain of Penafrancia Fluvial Colgante Bridge tragedy of September 16, 1972. We enriched our discussion with narratives of people who shared their very personal eyewitness account of the ensuing events. This new comprehensive edition comes with more updated information in exhaustive long narrative format. Before we start, thank you for listening and watching this portion of the Red Monkey Talks show, which is also being shared by Zabunga360 Emotion. Please subscribe, leave a comment, like and share this post, and hit the notification bell. It meant so much for us. Your support will contribute in a huge way to the awareness for others who could learn a thing or two from our content. This early, we extend our big thank you to all supporting our channels. When you like and share our content, you help increase the visibility and distribution of our posts. Imagine, if we can freely check out the pun and pinch in news, information, and culture, you need to know. And please continue watching as we move on with the show. Remembering the sorrows and pain of Penafrancia Fluvial Colgante Bridge tragedy of September 16, 1972. Long ago during the month of September, some 51 years ago in our fast recall, and counting. Remembering the sorrows and pain of Penafrancia Fluvial Colgante Bridge tragedy of September 16, 1972. Long ago during the month of September, some 51 years ago in our fast recall, and counting. As the near-dying sun slowly poised its descent, the bridge's silhouette on the Naga River provided a lovely backdrop for the still unfolding, almost near culmination, of the Penafrancia religious festivities. It was the perfect scene of the tableau, of combined sights and sounds, rowdy, expectant, religious and yet, merry. On the Colgante, the religious faithful, the enthusiasts, and the visitors jostled for a better view of the fluvial scenario down on the river, about 30 feet below. 
the same commotion on the bridge and fluvial scene on the river that Mil B is in Sal Orban, of radio stations DZG and DWEBFM were describing. Previously, the bridge was closed to large vehicular traffic, which was much weakened by a recent typhoon in June of the same year. There were countless small riverboats, which tugged the Van Cuerno with the images of the Virgin of Penafrancia and the El Divino Rostro. Also on board the main watercraft were priests, lay ministers, male guests and the chief of police of the city, among others. As per customary practice, no female, with a religious, patron, enthusiast or tourist, has ever been accommodated to accompany the images aboard the Van Cuerna, since the traditional fluvial was begun in the years which started in the 1700s. Many said that the image of the Penafrancia, representing the Virgin Mary, was to be the only, and usual woman on the barge. Long, flowing, haired Mila was on air that time. She was on the top of her form, describing how people on the bridge jostled for a view. She was envying the listeners, to give thanks to the patroness of Bicol, for the many blessings received. Her mother, Emerita, felt very proud of her daughter, while monitoring the radio report at home. The floating barge was less than 800 feet away. As the pagoda came closer to the vantage view by the bridge, excited onlookers on the river banks and on the Colgante became more restless. The jiggly bridge heaved and jerked. Then a loud cracking boom sounded, emanating from the bridge. A few seconds later, the swaying Colgante bridge disintegrated bringing with it the people who were caught astonished, shocked and fearful. Over at EZG, the walkie-talkie links of Mila and Sal crackled, then, went silent, and eventually cut off the air. On board the announcer's booth, Nora and Larry, who were taking their turns on board with the simultaneous broadcast of the sister stations, heard the brief gasp of commotion from the walkie-talkie, before it was disconnected. They then signaled for the technician, who readily switched to another waiting reporter online. At the Colgante, big shards and pieces and planks of wood fell on the river. People aboard the bridge also went down with the structure. The debris and people from the fallen bridge barely missed the front line of small river boats and boatmen tagging and pulling the Van Cuerna. It was about 15 minutes later after we left the Colgante bridge, Lakin Da Noom related, when we heard that the bridge collapsed. We were able to dodge disaster because I listened to that voice inside me. In a shared recollection by Tony Lugney Toon, I was working as a salesman for Coca-Cola back in 1972, and I was assigned in Naga City. I was drinking beer with a couple of my friends in a house near the Colgante Bridge. We had a good view of the Colgante from the veranda of the house. While we were watching the crowd at the Colgante Bridge, we suddenly saw the whole bridge collapse before our eyes. With the tragedy, we ended our drinking session immediately. Naga City Police Major Eduardo Ray remembered that day, it was like a nightmare. I was about 240 meters, equivalent to about 787.4 feet, from the Colgante Bridge riding on the barge carrying the Penafrancian image, when the bridge collapsed before my eyes. The next thing I knew, people were bobbing up and down the dark waters of the river, clawing one another to stay afloat. It was every man for himself. Indeed. At the area by the fallen bridge, children, men and women, found themselves floating and mixed with the wrecked bridge and debris. They fought for their lives, clawed at one another. The abled ones pulled themselves to either side of the riverbanks. Alert devotees who were on the banks helped grab grief-stricken survivors, and fished out bodies. Many people on the bridge, that fell, died. Some may have succumbed immediately, upon hitting the murky waters of the Naga River, struck by falling bodies, debris and crushed on boats beneath. We presumed that the victims may have not processed fast enough the predicament they were into, due to that all too quick event. Others have drowned under the weight of the debris. Many more died from electrocution. The electric wires that hang and lighted the colorful light bulbs, also caused death. Some bodies fished out of the river suffered electrical burns. There was total pandemonium on the site. There was wailing, crying and shouting. I went to Colgante Bridge when I finally found it safe to go near it, Yubuko continued his narrative. The entrance towards the bridge was packed with excited onlookers. It was chaotic. I was then standing on Pina Francia Avenue, and I could see people standing at the edge of where the bridge broke, and they were looking down at the river. Majority of them were just curious bystanders. Fearing that my parents might get worried, I decided to go home. 
Ivan, narrated. Meanwhile, the fluvial procession was stopped immediately. The Vanquerna with the religious images on board was left unscathed by the falling bridge. By sheer coincidence, it was at a far and safe distance from the disaster zone. Again, the religious community considered and attributed the spared destruction of the Vanquerna and the images as a miracle. On board the watercraft, Catholic priests, Monsignor Salvador Naz and Monsignor Domingo Nebrez, led the removal of the images from their respective undaws. The occupants disembarked from the watercraft, waded into the river, met wet, but unharmed. The images were passed from one up until the shoulder of the riverbank by the backyard property owned by Francisco Ossetri. Francisco was a dispatcher of bus company Pentrenco. By coincidence, Francisco was building his house, there was a good stock of lumber supplied from Tom Ban, Tinam Back, all ready for the construction work. The backyard was planted with thick banana trees, the voyageurs hastily cleared a pathway by weeding off the bushy banana leaves. Bossy tree was then convinced to spread over the lumber on the wet and slippery ground. It was converted to a quick pathway for safe and easy passage of the people who came from the Vancouver. From that time on, the pathway came to be referred to as the Hinawasun. In Bikol, it meant the place where the images and the people passed and emerged or surfaced. That pathway, led and connected, to the existing Mabini Street, and ultimately intersect the Penafrancia Avenue. While some devotees from the barge opted to go with the group that climbed up the riverbank by the Asi Tree's yard, some managed to clamber up the other side of the bank bordering Bar Yudayungdung, towards Blue Men Treat Street. Eventually, there were two groups of devotees that managed to get off the river on both sides of the riverbanks. The Mabini group led and continued the interrupted procession on Penafrancia Avenue. The Blue Men Tree faction also led another procession towards Mugsai Sai Avenue. We have to note here that some of the people, devotees on the streets including those that came from the Vanquerna were in tears, crying, and perhaps, still in shock and distraught, brought by the scene witnessed of the collapsing Colgante, or overheard over the radio. They hurriedly walked the street and eventually met at the intersection of Mug Sai Sai and Penafrancia Avenues. The merged group walked the last hundreds of feet, or so, until the doorstep, of the open doors of the Penafrancia Shrine, which was already prepared for the homecoming of the religious images. There was no merry raucous chanting of Viva la Virgen or Viva el Divino Rostro. Only somber mood prevailed during the last leg of the procession, until the shrine. After our lively visit to Maria Aelina's house, we decided to walk back to Centro or downtown, Valiant Tarot. While we were walking along Pangunknipin Avenue heading to Centro, we learned from other folks that the Colgante Bridge fell. Along the way, we met Mangetong more or less. Back in those days, there were just two names in photography known to the Catholic schools around the old cathedral. Mangetong's and the Bragadies Studio. No one went to Arivalo's because that was UNC's territory. As we approached Mangetong, we noticed that he was soaking wet. Mang Edong told us, Nagabanoi and Kogante. The Kogante collapsed. I am not sure if we helped him, but we rushed to the Kogante bridge to find out for ourselves what had happened. Grief and despair mobbed the scene. Names were being screamed. Roger Diaz, now an officer in the military, remembered the scene as a wet hell. It was almost past six in the evening when I arrived back home, Valiant continued. From the street, I could sense that our house was full of people, and all the lights were on. When the people inside our house saw me, they all came alive with shouts, screams of surprise and relief. My sister cried. My grandmother's voice in Tiganyun dialect went above the din. Don't scold him anymore. When the excitement subsided, Tito revealed, I was informed that one of the names that were listed as a fatality in the Colgante Bridge tragedy was a Valiente. Upon hearing this, my uncle's brother and a cousin went to local radio stations in Naga to verify if I was indeed one of the people who died in the accident. My relatives also went to the provincial hospital and other sites to check the corpses taken from the Colgante. They went through agonizing moments while pulling the sheets off of every corpse to check their missing relative. I could not remember anything else at home. I did not even explain where I was for that would have been the most trivial explanation for that day. For some time, the churches of Naga Cathedral, San Francisco and the Penafrancia Shrine, started its church bells ringing. 
joined by a few of Naga City's police cars on the scene with wailing sirens. The melancholy death tolls consumed an eerie night summarily closing for the day. The once joyful fluvial festivities turned deadly and tragic. Where local radio stations fielded reporters in covering the fluvial procession, the attention was turned to broadcasting the unfolding rescue at the river. Notifying unknown relatives of the identified and still unidentified victims. The government of the province and the city was so ill-prepared and ill-equipped. There was no equipment on hand readily available for mounting a rescue and retrieval operation. No city or provincial personnel was ever trained or available to let one, either. Former Senator Edmundo B. Sia, owner of the Filipinas Broadcasting Network, instructed station manager Fortuno to dispatch a probe team for Colgante. It was primarily to locate and determine the whereabout and safety of its personnel, Mila Bias and Sal Orban. Orban would later emerge from the murky waters of Naga River, alive and gasping, with bruises and, then recounted the ordeal he had undergone. He lost track of his partner Mila, when the bridge went down. Nora recounted, Larry, and I, went to the Provincial Hospital, the Mother Seaton Hospital and St. John Hospital. We looked for an injured Mila. While searching for her, we saw lifeless bodies lined up on the alleyways of the hospitals. They were all covered with white cloths. There was pandemonium, the facilities were very noisy. Many people, maybe relatives or friends, wailing and crying out loud for their lost or dead loved ones. Nora continued, my co-teacher from Kalihiyu to Santa Isabel, Miss Carmen Lee, was one of the lifeless body on the alley. I recalled before noon that fateful day, she refused to go with us for lunch, and opted to watch the fluvial at the bridge, instead. Carmen was an adopted daughter of the sisters managing the Kalihiyu to Santa Isabel. When she was a baby, she was left at the doorstep of the school, presumably, maybe by her mother a relative, where nuns found her. She was nurtured and educated by the nuns at the CSI, nor related. When Carmen graduated in college, she was hired as a teacher at the CSI. It seemed that many residential houses in Ba Gumbayan have lost a member of the family, very sad Nora added to her recollection. Later, a team of Philippine Navy frogmen arrived and helped scour the wreckage area, dived countless and many times for bodies that were pinned down the bottom of the river by heavy debris. One of the lifeless bodies the frogmen found was that of Mila. She had a big bruise on her head. Our house was located near the Pangungnipan Bridge along the banks of the Bicol River, recounted Juni Alblai. When the news about the Kolgante collapse reached my parents, they started gathering my brothers and sisters to make sure that all of us were accounted for. We were not allowed to leave the house. At around 6 p.m., we all saw a body floating by Naga River near our house. Somebody came riding a boat and retrieved the body. Witnesses said that people around the area continued their rescue and recovery operation together with the frogmen, until they almost run out of their breaths. They were totally exhausted. In a recollection of events, Todimi Siyas and Mariso Ocampo, jointly wrote in detail that, desiring to help, many jumped instinctively into the river. With prodding from Naga policeman Delphin Platoon, who calmed the frantic crowd. They fished out bodies and survivors until they got lame tired, way beyond exhaustion. Muscle cramps and fatigue overtook the shivering rescuers, who got relief from ablutions of oil of wintergreen, a liquid bomb given by nameless people in the crowd. The injuries were as apparent as the telltale signs of drowning after the Colgante Bridge collapse, Misi Yaz and Ocampo recounted. Electrical burns made victim recognition hard. Grimy detritus from river trash messed up some victims' bloodied faces whose fingers, in cadaveric flexion, looked as if they were in prayer. With rigor mortis, the bodies were hastily covered by wet newspapers. Many onlookers cried. Overwhelmed by the horrific scene, others threw up in the shadows of a black sky. Many of the recovered bodies were lined up on the paved streets surrounding the disaster area. The unclaimed were wrapped or covered in newspapers or brown craft papers. Later, bodies were placed in hastily made, improvised, rough, unsanded wooden boxes. An eyewitness account claimed that some victims were immediately rushed to the Kalihayu to Santa Isabel, and other nearby hospitals for treatment. Bodies of the deceased were laid on the riverbanks waiting to be identified or brought to the mortuary, with Father Alfonso Grajita, blessing each with holy oils. So, going back, going back now, 
to the tragedy of Colgante. That is the advantage of an old man. I was right, I was right there when it happened. Okay. I was still assigned in Norte. I came here in October. This happened 72, September. Yes, uh -huh. Okay. I came equally for the fiesta. And as soon as we heard about this, I we were just near the cathedral, our home. I rushed to the Colgante and saw the people falling into the yeah. river and the boats going down and uh, half of the bridge going down like that. And people were dying. Yeah. One thing I could do, and I think it made me very happy, I was giving the up general absolution to people. Sige lang. I was giving the general absolution for all the people falling down into the river. And I can't imagine, perhaps, I saved, uh, with the help of already, I saved a lot of people before they forgot their breath or their life. And that is the beautiful thing I experienced there. And then I saw these people who did not have any training, dumping the people into drinks, huh? without applying the first aid. I could see some, like one of them is Dr. Atlas, yes. saving people, no? applying the, the, the artificial, uh, artificial respiration, cardiovascular vascular resuscitation, and they will survive. But these people who will come into the jeep in one of the stations all died. People being dumped into jeeps and being brought to one of the stations in Naga. I heard over a hundred million, about a hundred or no, died. Uh, and all the others who survived, well, they were just blessed, no? those who were able to swim away. Because aside from the falling bridge, there was this electricity. There was this electricity being opened huh, to people and the, in the water. Yeah. And the water was the, yeah. Yeah. the electricity and people were dying because of that electric shock. So, here is what happened. There were Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts on both ends of the bridge. There huh? were Boy Scouts on both ends of the bridge. There trying to stop people from coming. But since they were small boys, they ignored the Boy Scouts. And people started coming and filling up the Colgante. Kaya buminagsak. Ano ang lesson? Be prepared. Kasi we can be taken by him anytime. And we cannot know when or where or how we will go. One of the retrieved fatalities was Santiago Ojeda of Gua, Camarines Sur. He witnessed the event and used a camera and voice recorder which was recovered later on the river. In his recorded observation, he mentioned that, quote, This bridge is full of people, and I don't see anyone directing traffic here, unquote. You have just watched a choice cut excerpt from the first in focus main feature of the Red Monkey Talks show, dealing with the Penafrancia Fluvial Colgante Bridge disaster of September 16, 1972, and related trivia. From the joint and collaborative project by the RMT and the Zabunga 360 in motion channels. Based from the original text published online in Zabunga360.net. This edition contained a revised long-form narrative with additional, comprehensive and updated information. From the script by Japadupi under the direction and technical supervision of Danton Pascual. Subscribe to our channels, like our content, leave a comment, and ring the notification bell, to get timely updates. When you like and share our content, you help increase the visibility and distribution of our posts. Your support will also contribute in a huge way, to the awareness for others who could learn a thing or two from our content. Thanks for watching.